Good afternoon. My name is Don Healy, and I'm here with the American Library Association podcast. And we're here in the recording booth, and we're located in um, beautiful downtown Chicago, Illinois. And believe me, I'm told it's windy as the devil. Okay, today we have a really an exciting guest, Edie Nathan. Edie is an MA. And she's written a neat book called The Dance, Self-Discovery Through Trauma and Loss. And it's brief. First of all, um, what caused you, what got you writing a book about grief? There are many life experiences that can lead someone to writing a book on grief. I lost my loved one when I was 27 years old. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, and and what losing my best friend and and my partner did at 20 when I lost him at 27 is he changed the entire trajectory of my life. Okay. And so I am able to take what he taught me about love and about life and about being nurtured. And I decided to change my life and become a therapist and work with people who were grieving. That then exploded into the idea of how are we going to talk about grief in a much bigger way. Okay. That is uh, just an interesting uh, background. And I think, I'm kind of curious, you have to use the metaphor between grief and dance. What, what caused you to tie those two together? That's an interesting linkage. So the title of the book, it, it, the, the subtitle is The Dance of Self-Discovery Through Trauma and Loss. Okay. And the thing is, in its grief, the dance is about how do you partner with something, grief, that you do not really want to partner with. All you want to do is push it away. All yes. you want to do is say, no, 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 no. I am not, not interested me. Not me. in dealing with this, and I'm just going to swallow it. I'm going to probably maybe get sick because I'm swallowing all that emotion. But instead, what this book offers you is the idea, okay, you know what, come on. Let's partner. Let's okay. dance. Good. And there are going to be days it's going to oh. be the tango. Oh. And there are going to be days you're going to be, it's a lone dance. And there are going to be days when it's just nice and smooth and easy. And it's like, okay, so instead of trying to put you away and make you non-existent, I understand that for my life, you will be a partner. But it doesn't mean that it is the only part of me that exists. Okay, so... Um, I happen to take a lot of dance classes, and you mentioned the tango, and I'll tell you how confusing <laughs> The tango is confusing, that, isn't that it? That can be, but that's something yeah. we're working on. And the tango is not easy. It is not. And I would have to say the grief is not easy. That's it, right. It's something that, uh, that hangs on you. Right, and isn't the tango about a push and a pull yes. and a tug? Yes, it is. And 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 it is that internal war. Yeah. And that's what grief is. Now you mentioned that you became a therapist. What what kind of therapist are you? So I I work with grief and okay. loss and trauma, and then I became a sex therapist. So I combine sex therapy along with grief therapy along with trauma therapy and. Actually, I'm in the process of writing a new book called Healing Sexual Grief, Reclaim the Self from Loathing to Liberation to Love. You know, it's not a subject that a lot of people are comfortable with, but it's a, it's a subject that's with us. It is. And it's a, a, it weighs on you. And I like your idea of getting some because I, I really believe you're absolutely right. If you bury it, it can bury you. That's exactly right. And so, its grief is the is is really the opening of the conversation to the next book. And what I see grief doing and trauma doing is it holds you hostage. And so the idea here is how how do we live with our grief in such a way that we're not held hostage by it. Now, 
I guess I have to ask what's probably one of the toughest questions is, let's suppose your spouse is dealing with you and you don't know how to help them. Where do you start? You start with love. Okay, that makes sense. You, and and I and I and I don't mean that like a throw a throwaway line, but understand that everyone grieves differently, and they're not going to grieve yes, the way that's true. you might write it or script right. it, right? I mean, we're authors here, and you know, grief has gotten written about for centuries, and right. no one grieves the same way. It is yes. like your fingerprint, and so to understand that your loved one is going to grieve in his or her or their own way and to honor that and to ask how can I be of service to you my love um, for several years I was a hospice volunteer and they have two types they have the, the volunteer who's actually in nursing care and then they have the volunteer that is just with people and at the time I was doing it, we, were, we stayed with that person for a year. And it's not a big deal, but it's so-and-so's birthday. And you go and check on them for their birthday. And you find out if they're getting groceries, and anniversaries, and all those sorts of things that you don't think about. No. And, but if it, you agree with me, and oftentimes people will drive it, like you say, so far down and trying to reach inside and pull it out. I, I would think oftentimes it requires some sort of therapist to help get the ball started. Sometimes it does. However, culturally, sometimes the idea of therapy is not acceptable because you solve it within the family and you don't shame the family by going outside of the community or the family yeah. unit. However, reading and, and, and using techniques such as breathing, such as exercise, such as writing, these are all arenas that can help part of the healing. If you don't deny it, because what we know, like anxiety, when we deny anxiety, it gets bigger. If we say, oh, there you are, you trickster, I'm going to come and I'm going to meet you head on, that's and that's what I talk about in its grief. And I'm going to get you. And, and well, I'm going to learn about you, yeah. and you're not going to get me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you mentioned writing, and, and I think that's a real important part of the equation because I was active with the Military Writers Society of America, and our vice president lost her son in Iraq. And she said, you know, I went into the blackest hole I've ever been in, but I started and I wrote my way out, and I wrote about my son, and I wrote stories, and it made all the difference in the world. But it's not a piece of cake. It's not something you can do right away. No. And you have to hang with it. And she, you need other people. That's why we have the Writers' Society. Because people would sit around and talk about it. That's right. You know, and get it out. So. Yes. Uh, writing it is so important. Sharing it. But you know, sometimes people are introverts. And they don't want to talk about it. They, it's, not, right. it's, not, it's not part of them. And I also talk about that in It's Grief. Okay. In the introvert. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Are you an ambivert? Because based on who you are, and that's the tenant of the book, who, you're going to learn about who you are through grief. Absolutely. Now, I guess as we close, get down to closing up, what else would you like to say about your book? What do you have, what messages do you have for people on this book? So, for some people, don't do it alone. Don't think that there's anything wrong in asking for help, even if it's a friend. And you may not even know what, what you need. Ask yourself. Have a relationship with yourself, because grief is very personal. And the last piece is, I love The, the Wizard of Oz. And, I, and, and like Dorothy, who had to be a traveler and go on a journey and go through all of her tasks, which is exactly what grief does, you have had the power all along. You have those red shoes, metaphorically, to, to, to heal and to dance with your grief. And to solve, kind of, I don't know that you ever solve it. No, and that's why I didn't say you get through it. No. That's why you will not hear me say, oh, it's going to be over. 
one of the best conversations I ever had was when a woman came up to me and said, "So, it, tell me, it's going to get, a, it's going to be better, right? I'm going to, I'm going to feel better, and, and and I'm going to forget." And I said, "Well, you might feel better, but I don't know if you're going to forget." And, I mean, I you know, and you know what she said to me? She said, "Thank you for being honest." And I think that's what you need to be. That's right. Now, with what you've had to say, I'm sure a lot of the, a lot of people are interested in you interested in your book how can they search out more information do you have a website or, or what do you have to help them? I yes I have a very full website you can okay. find me at ednathan.com that's e-d-y-n-a-t-h-a-n.com you can also see me as a blog writer on psychology today okay. and on medium and please you know if you have heard me here let me know, and I will send you a free meditation. Ah, well, now that's a wonderful, wonderful. Well, I think we're just, I'm, I'm told we're out of time. So this is Don Healer, and I'm with the American Library Association podcast. And I've been with Edie Nathan and, uh, in a really interesting discussion. And I sincerely hope that if you're having a problem, if you're grieving, don't stay away. Check Edie's book out, check out her website, and she's, she can help you out. I have a feeling she can help you out. Okay, thanks so much. We enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you, Edie. Thank you, Don.